Hello, good morning everybody. Um, my name is uh, Dirk Groen and I am uh, the chair of the PRAISE User Forum. Uh, I'm also senior lecturer at Grinnell University London. And uh, today I am uh, chairing the, well, the session about peer review in both PRAISE and EuroHPC, as well as the PRAISE User Forum open discussion. The first part um, is going to be a presentation by uh, Krishnakshi Buyan, uh, Clara Mastrovic, and Andrea Mayeles. Um, about the peer review process. And the peer review process is fairly extensive, uh, so they will take about 45 minutes to explain that in detail. And it's very important because, of course, with EuroHPC as well as PRAISE having access mechanisms, it's good, uh, I think, for everyone to have a good understanding of what the procedures are today. Um, so, yeah, I would like to welcome all three of them to the podium. Um, so feel free to come. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for your presence in this uh, session. Thank you. <laughs> um, we are the peer review officers from Praise AISBR. My name is Krishnakshi Bhuya, and together with my colleagues, uh, Clara Mestrovic and uh, Andrea Merilesh, we are going to do a presentation on the peer review process of Praise in this session. So I will start with uh, an overview on what uh, this presentation is going to be about. Uh, we will start with the peer review process of PRAISE and uh, the different calls that we have at PRAISE. We will present some statistics from the biggest tier zero project that we have at PRAISE, which is the project access call. Uh, we will then uh, move ahead to talk about the peer review process involvement in the EuroHPC calls and the different EuroHPC calls that we have, uh, the current ones as well as those that will be uh, coming in the near future. Uh, then uh, since both the processes of, uh, like the peer review process for both the entities are not exactly same, so we will uh, show a slight comparison uh, between the processes. And um, finally, some advice to the applicants, uh, both uh, the current, those who are planning to apply now and even for future applications. And uh, we will conclude with uh, our peer review platform, which can be used for applying to these calls. Okay, so we start with praise as uh, most of you who are already associated with PRAISE are already aware. Uh, PRAISE enables access to computing and uh, data management resources. And uh, this resources that PRAISE provides uh, is uh, intended to promote uh, scientific and industrial research. And uh, in order to facilitate a fair and a transparent uh, way of uh, um, uh, trans uh, transparency in all the applications that we receive at PRAISE, we follow a peer review process, uh, which is specific for each of these call types that we have at PRAISE. Um, the sole goal of the peer review process is uh, to select proposals based on the highest possible scientific and technical standards. Um, this brings us to the principles uh, on which the peer review process of PRAISE is based on. So the first is fairness. Um, proposals are actually evaluated on uh, merit and uh, potential high impact uh, on European and international uh, science and economy. Then uh, transparency. Uh, the peer review process is transparent and clear for all stakeholders including uh, the funding agencies of all members, co member countries and uh, users from research and industry. Expertise, uh, the reviews are done by experts from the scientific fields of these proposals and uh, we periodically reshuffle uh, these reviewers. And uh, another important uh, principle, which is confidentiality. So all the proposals received at PRAISE are uh, treated with the needed confidentiality, both from uh, PRAISE uh, staff members as well as from uh, the reviewers. Okay, so no parallel assessment. So a uh, peer review process uh, builds on the experience and best practices of uh, national and international uh, institutions and constitutes a uh, 
uh, a centralized peer review exercise, which is accepted uh, both uh, at the recognized by all the peer uh, press um, partner countries and uh, the scientific community. And uh, applicants' right to reply is also an important aspect for us, uh, where the applicants have the right to respond to the scientific as well as uh, technical evaluations. Uh, in order to uh, prevent or manage the conflict of interest, the Scientific Steering Committee, also called SSC of Praise, has established a conflict of interest policy. Uh, the latest version is from March 2020. So, and uh, this policy applies to both praise members as well as reviewers and uh, has the conditions that are listed here that uh, there should be no previous collaborations with uh, PI and the team members for past 10 years. Uh, no affiliation with the same institute as PI or team members for past three years and uh, no family uh, relationship. Okay, so we now proceed to the different calls that we have at PRACE. We will begin yeah, uh, with the project access call. So the project access give, uh, call gives uh, access to the tier zero resources, uh, which uses codes that has been previously tested and has demonstrated the high scalability and optimization. Uh, we will discuss all these calls uh, in detail, so this is just a brief introduction about the calls. Um, the ICEI call is, uh, gives access to tier zero and tier one resources. Uh, these resources in these calls are from uh, Phoenix Research Institute. Uh, it is funded by the European ICEI projects. Then the benchmark and uh, the development call, uh, this allows the users to optimize uh, scale and test codes on praise tier zero systems before applying to the project access call. Uh, these are the four calls which uh, uses the peer review process of praise. Uh, the rest of the calls that are going, uh, I'm going to mention after this are where the peer review team is not in, involved. Uh, and another call which is a past call. Uh, the shape call, so it is a, uh, SME HPC adoption program in Europe. Uh, it allows uh, the SMEs to access uh, tier zero or tier one resources, uh, and it is uh, in, yeah, intended to uh, make it easier for SMEs uh, to try out their ideas, to utilize uh, HPC to enhance their business. Then uh, we also have the DECI call, which is a praise distributed European computing uh, initiative. It provides access to tier one resources, and it is basically for researchers and PIs who uh, want uh, access to uh, resources which are currently not available in their country, uh, and also whose uh, resource need is not big enough that they would need access to a tier zero system. Then COVID-19 fast track call, as the name says, uh, was a fast track call. Uh, this was introduced in the time of uh, when the uh, COVID-19 pandemic began. Uh, this is uh, closed now, but it gave access to tier zero resources and um, it was initiated and implemented to support project proposals uh, that requested computing resources uh, to mitigate the COVID-19 pandemic. It followed a fast track uh, review process to provide sweet feedback to applicants. So uh, as I said, we will now go into the details of uh, these calls uh, that the peer review uh, team handles. Uh, first is the project access call. So as uh, I already said, uh, project access call enables access to tier zero resources. And uh, yeah, so we have uh, two calls per year for project access, uh, one which opens in March and the other in September. The allocation for uh, the one that opens in March is in October and uh, the one that starts in September, the allocation is in April. Uh, project duration can be of two types, uh, single year uh, for 12 months or multi-year for two to three years. Uh, there are three types of submissions in this uh, project access call. Uh, first submission or uh, a resubmission 
or uh, thirdly, a continuation. A continuation is basically a proposal which has already been uh, given access previously in PRACE system, and it is mandatory to submit progress or final report while applying uh, via this continuation submission. Okay, now the eligibility. Uh, scientific and researchers from academia and industry are uh, eligible to apply to the PRACE project access call. Uh, the PI on, or uh, project, uh, pro team leader, um, project leader, sorry, must be from uh, uh, Europe and uh, should have an employment contract of at least uh, three months uh, uh, after the end of the allocation period. So, uh, and secondly, if uh, and the application is from a company, uh, they have to have their head office in the Europe or their uh, substantial research and development activity has to be in Europe. And uh, we accept proposals only of, uh, which are uh, from a civilian, uh, civilian nature and uh, double granting is not permitted if uh, projects have already been awarded uh, uh, currently like on that phase, if it's uh, getting another award uh, from Brace HPC, the program, then uh, we do not allow another Brace uh, uh, access. Uh, so the systems uh, that uh, provided access in the 23rd call, which was uh, the last, last call for us, uh, are uh, listed here, it's uh, first is Jewels. Jewels has uh, two partitions, Jewels cl Cluster and Jewels Booster. It is in Germany. Uh, Supermook, uh, it is as well in Germany, and Hawk. Um, then Juliet Curie, which has three partitions, uh, Juliet Curie Rome, Juliet Curie KNL, and Juliet Curie SKL. They are located in France. Then Pis Giant, uh, which is uh, located in Switzerland. Marconi 100, which is in Italy, and uh, Mare Nostrum, which is located in uh, Spain. So this is the workflow of the project access call. Uh, so as uh, I already mentioned, we have the call open for uh, two times a year. It's uh, open for approximately eight weeks in which the applicants can apply. So the proposal submission is done via the peer review platform, uh, which is peer review tool, uh, and it is also mandatory, apart from filling the online form, to submit a project scope and plan uh, in the proposal. Then uh, once the uh, call is closed, all the proposals pass to the administrative check, in which uh, uh, we check administratively whether the proposals have used the correct template or not, uh, whether the minimum amount of resources requested uh, has been respected, and uh, all sections, subsections, and tables uh, are filled. Then once uh, these proposals are administrative, for those proposals which are administratively accepted, they uh, uh, move ahead for technical as well as scientific uh, evaluation. Uh, While well, the technical evaluation is done by technical experts from uh, uh, the centers, uh, the scientific evaluation is uh, conducted by uh, three external reviewers. And uh, after this technical and scientific evaluation phase is over, we open uh, the window for the applicants uh, to respond to these uh, evaluations. So they have seven days to respond. And uh, we would like to mention that the access committee uh, highly values the response from the applicants to these reviews. So we encourage uh, the applicants to uh, respond, yes. Um, so after we close the response to review phase, uh, then we assign the proposals to two reporters, uh, one lead and uh, one second reporter, and uh, they submit uh, individual reports as well as consolidated report on the proposal. Uh, these proposals then go to the access committee meeting, which is a three-day meeting, and uh, the scientific as well as technical evaluations are discussed in this. Uh, then uh, reporters report are considered as well as the response of the applicants are uh, considered in this access committee meeting. So, um, 
Then uh, the access committee also, yes, uh, the access committee also ranks each of these proposals and uh, presents an allocation proposition for the resource allocation session uh, in which the final decision on the, the, on the official allocation of resources is taken. Uh, we would like to highlight that 10% uh, of uh, the resources being offered per center is prioritized for uh, industry track proposals. Again, 10% uh, is for uh, multi-year proposals and 0.5% is reserved for centers of excellence. Uh, finally, the outcome of uh, this resource allocation decision is uh, communicated to the applicants uh, along with uh, feedback from the AC members. Uh, I would call upon my colleague, Clara, to continue with the presentation from here on. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Chris, uh, for giving this intro about what we do in praise and our calls. So I will actually continue with the project access call, but just a brief overview after she showed like the complex peer review process that we handle. So we will now uh, demonstrate a little bit of the statistics actually. So what was the fruit of, of the labor of the peer review? So uh, the first statistics would be the submitted and awarded proposals. So throughout the history of the project access call from the early access call until the last um, call that we had, which is the 23rd call. So this is the statistics. As we can see, the curves go up and down and, um, and we can see some balance at, uh, from the 17th call. I would say that um, the ratio is, um, is smaller. So then we will proceed to other statistics, which is uh, the awarded proposals also, again, from the early access call to the 23rd call. Regarding the research fields uh, distribution, which may, may be also interesting. So we have a pie chart. It's not maybe that color friendly, but uh, this is why we put the percentages here on the side uh, so, so we can see um, where is maybe more interest in, in certain research fields for HPC resources obtained by project taxes than others. Uh, here, uh, I would just like to point out that um, the majority of resources, which is 26%, uh, uh, roughly maybe 27, uh, belong to chemical sciences and materials. Uh, then we have engineering. Um, I believe afterwards is fundamental constitutes of matter. Um, universe sciences with 13.6%, oh no, and biochemistry before that, um, with uh, mathematics and physiology and medicine at, um, at a, a little bit uh, less than, than others. Okay, um, so the last statistics that we would like to demonstrate here is actually how many resources that did we give out through all of these years from the first call to the, to the, to the last one that we had. So the statistics are the following. This is showed in billion core hours. So we can see uh, how it grew um, throughout the years. So this is just uh, some fun facts, even though this was mentioned uh, today uh, in one of the presentations. So up until now, we, we distributed 30, 32 billion core hours via the project access call. And um, from the 12th call, uh, we distributed because then PRACE introduced uh, centers of excellence to give some resources to centers of excellence. So from the 12th call until the 23rd call, we distributed uh, uh, 351 million core hours to centers of excellence. So, okay, uh, with that, I would close the project access call uh, and proceed uh, briefly with the ICI call. So uh, the difference between this call and the um, project access call, one of the differences is that uh, this call is managed actually uh, uh, not through our platform, uh, but uh, basically the applicant can get access to tier zero and tier one resources. They can also request additional um, resources like interactive computing services, VM services, archival, and active, uh, active data repository. Well, here we want to highlight that this call is funded by the uh, Phoenix Research Infrastructure. So the, uh, the projects are usually single year projects. They are single year projects. Um, we have three to four calls per year, depending on the yearly organization of the call. 
and the types of submission are basically the same as project taxes, where we can have a first submission, a resubmission in case of previous failure, and continuation of, of uh, w a research that ha has already been done in place machines. Um, so regarding the peer review process of the ICI call, this is a very straightforward and we would say a more s a simple process than, uh, than project taxes, but we still do have a peer review process. Uh, with regard to that, the submission period uh, lasts for, for a certain amount of time where, we, where the proposals are submitted via email. Uh, furthermore, then we proceed to the technical assessment when the proposals are uh, forwarded to the HPC Center, of course, uh, to, that match the proposal. Uh, then we would proceed to the scientific evaluation. In this case, uh, we have an ICI panel. Uh, and two rapporteurs from the panel are assigned per proposal and they write their evaluations. After which we follow with the ICI panel meeting and the results are as following, accepted, conditionally accepted or rejected. In case of conditionally accepted proposals, this is when we require certain clarifications from the PI prior to accepting the proposal or maybe rejecting. Uh, and of course, these results are communicated afterwards. So this is a short overview of the, of the planning of the ICI calls uh, for this year. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, finished the call eight. Uh, so allocations will start in April. Uh, also call nine is open and, um, and will end on 22nd of April. So yeah. Uh, the next calls that I would like to briefly mention are benchmark and development calls. They are very important in terms of preparing proposals uh, for uh, bigger production calls like uh, project access in this case. So the benchmark call is meant for sco uh, code scalability testing while the development call is meant for code development and optimization. Uh, both are intended, as I, I already mentioned, to feed the proposals for the project access call, and they are not intended for production runs. Uh, these are continuously open calls. Uh, the duration is for benchmark call, this is two months, for development call is six months. Uh, this is a little bit of history because this is a, quite a recent change. This was previously known as a preparatory access call where we had four types of calls. So currently, the benchmark call is the previous type A, and the development call is the previous type B call. Type C and D are no longer available, and these calls um, were different than types A and B, um, not only for the duration, but also because they were providing um, extra expert support while, uh, to applicants. Um, okay, so the peer review process is very simple regarding this. Uh, the proposals are submitted currently now uh, via our new online platform. Uh, after which the proposals are forwarded to the, um, uh, to the respective HPC centers where proposals are either accepted or rejected. The applicants are then notified by the HPC centers and they can uh, start preparing their work. So for both uh, calls, this is very, very straightforward. Uh, this is a table of available resources. Uh, one thing that, we, that maybe would be a good thing to mention is that the resources for benchmark and development calls are fixed. So the applicants cannot choose how much resources they would, they would like to have. Um, okay, for, with this I, I close uh, regarding the, the praise calls for proposals. And uh, I will start with a little introduction with your HPC and the praise peer review and this uh, collaboration. So uh, I don't think I need to mention a lot of things regarding the UHPC joint undertaking. I believe everyone is aware um, what they do. Uh, but uh, just re with regard to, to our uh, connection is uh, that we would like to highlight that they provide access to HPC resources via the different access modes. Uh, the peer review process is currently, I mean, is managed by PRACE and um, all the procedures are actually described in the access policy so we advise everyone with any extra questions regarding this to always can refer to the access policy that has been published. Uh, regard, with regard to the conflict of interest policy and the peer review principles, I believe Chris uh, explained everything very nicely before, so this is all applied to your HPC calls that we manage as well. So uh, the access modes, um, we have the extreme access scale call that is currently still, I mean, it's not open, but is, is intended to be open. 
which is a parallel that we can draw, draw with project access. Um, yeah, and um, it's, it's intended for extremely large allocations uh, for pre uh, exascale systems. Then we have the regular access call, which is actually open, it's continuously open. Um, so uh, it's also for access to larger locations uh, in your HPC systems. Um, and we also have benchmark call and the development call similar to Praise, uh, also for code optimization, performance data and algor algorithm development. Um, furthermore, we would like to mention two additional calls which which are not active uh, yet, uh, just uh, they, are, they are planned. Uh, with, this is regarding the fast track for academia, which is uh, intended for academic users uh, to have a track, uh, I'm, that have a successful track record and they have to have fast access to HPC resources. Uh, this is all, then we also have the same thing for industry proposals and this is um, for industrial entities that actually uh, have to have a proof of concept in a, in a very short time. Um, this will be, I, I would like to say, maybe an ex exceptional cases. Okay, so then we have the eligibility. Uh, we have a slight difference from PRACE um, with regard to, to, to this. Uh, as you may have know, with PRACE, uh, people from all around the world can apply to our calls. Um, but with regard to the URHPC, we would like to highlight that the principal investigators have to be um, from uh, affiliations that belong to the countries uh, uh, to the countries list of Horizon 2020. So this is uh, an exclusion criterion. Um, we have a little bit of difference here with, uh, that we would like to highlight regarding the regular access call and the extreme scale call. Uh, with the regular access call, principal investigators can only have one regular access allocation awarded per call. With the difference with the extreme scale access call, principal investigators and co-investigators can have only one extreme scale um, access allocation per call. Okay, we will now proceed with the uh, HPC systems uh, covered uh, by, by your HPC, um, I mean, that, that are offered and going to be offered by your HPC calls. Um, so we made a distinction of the machines that are yet to come. Um, so first of all, we have Lumi in Finland. Uh, so they are, I'm, we, we mentioned here the two partitions because Lumi G will, uh, still, is still not available for, for applying to. Uh, then we have Carolina in Czech Republic. Then we have Meluxina in, um, in Luxembourg. Then we have Vega in Slovenia, uh, Discover in, um, in Bulgaria. Uh, then we have these, um, we have Leonardo uh, from Italy that is yet to come uh, to be available, the Calion from uh, Portugal, and Mare Nostrum 5 in Spain. Um, so for the regular access call, I will give a brief general overview. Um, it is intended to uh, serve research domains or communities that require large scale HPC resources. It is open to all fields of science, industry and public sector. So this is a continuously open call with three cutoffs uh, per year. The, project, the projects are single year projects. Uh, the first cutoff, this is just uh, information wise information, um, it was in December 2021. We are currently having, so it's continuously open, the applicants can apply um, at, at their convenience. Um, so with regard to the regular access call, we have three tracks, uh, the scientific track, the industry track and the public administration track. So these three tracks are available for, for applicants to apply with uh, certain reserves of resources for the scientific, that is 75%, which is the, the majority of the resources, then follows industry with the 20% and the public administration with the 5% reserve. Uh, this is also, um, we would like to draw a pal parallel here because we have three evaluation criterions, which are excellence, innovation and impact, quality and efficiency of the implementation, which the reviewers will evaluate for every proposal. So if we have different uh, access tracks, then we should 
maybe weight some criteria differently. So this is exactly what is what is happening um, in case of ties. So for the scientific um, track proposals, the excellence criterion is is more weighted. For industry, this is innovation and impact, and uh, the same is the public administration track. So there is a slight difference. Um, actually, what, what I, I forgot to mention, that which, which is very important regarding these, um, can I go back? Uh, okay, so I forgot to mention here with the three evaluation criterions, which is pretty important. Um, in order for the application to be accepted, so we have one grades one to five per criterion. We have to have a minimum grade of three per criterion, but the overall grade has to be above ten. So this is this is just um, short um, information that that I believe that is useful. So I will conclude with, with this part. Uh, for the regular access call, the access resource committee is also divided into research domains, which we would like to highlight here because there are slightly different, uh, I, this is a, a slight difference uh, between PRACE and your HPC calls. Um, so we have uh, biochemistry, bioinformatics, life sciences, physiology, and medicine domain. Uh, chemical sciences, materials, uh, solid state physics, computational physics, universe sciences, fundamental, fundamental con constituents of matter, earth system sciences and environmental studies, engineering, mathematics, and computer uh, sciences, and uh, last but not least is the socioeconomic sciences and humanities. Um, I would just like to add that uh, we have domain panel chairs uh, for each and every of these um, um, domains, and they, they take care of, of each um, batch of proposals that, that fall into each domain. With this, I would like to conclude and pass uh, on the presentation to my colleague Andrea, and thank you. Thank you, Clara, uh, and good morning to all. I will continue with the, the peer review process for regular access uh, call. And here, I'm not, it's not presenting. Okay, now it's done. Uh, so I will present the workflow for the peer review process for the regular access call. So as for praise calls, we have too many, uh, sta too many stages uh, for the, the peer review process. The first one we considered as the evaluation uh, stage, and the second one is regarding the resource allocation uh, stage. So for the first, uh, for the first uh, stage, um, as we mentioned uh, before, the regular access call is a continuously open call which means that we have cutoffs, uh, and after the, the end of the cutoff, we have um, the administrative uh, check, because ha before we have the proposal submitted, uh, which is done also by, via our praise, um, praise tool. Uh, and after that, the, all the proposals uh, go to uh, the administrative check, which is done by, by us at the office, the peer review officers. And here we take a look uh, precisely in some points, uh, like if, if a PI is used the correct uh, um, template, if they demand the minimum uh, resources uh, they are applying, uh, if the scientific, if the subsections and sections of the scope and plan are um, are completely uh, full, fill in, uh, and if we have the scaling plots and Gantt chart uh, and tables uh, also. So, considering the, in this administrative check, we accept or reject proposals. After this, all the accepted ones went to the uh, process of technical and uh, uh, scientific evaluation. Here, the technical assessment is done by uh, the uh, technical uh, experts in the HPC uh, centers, uh, and it's done one uh, review per proposal and per partition. After this, um, we have the scientific um, evaluation, which in this case for regular access, it, it's done uh, by the rapporteurs, 
we, which we call rapporteurs, which are two experts, uh, and they submit two individual reports per proposal, once again. Uh, in this case, the rapporteurs, they are members, what we call in the EuroHPC uh, calls, uh, the ARC, uh, it's the Access, Access uh, Resource Committee. So they are members uh, of this ARC. Um, after this um, uh, evaluation stage, we pass to the resource alloca allocation stage, um, where we have three main meetings uh, for deciding at the end which proposals are awarded or not awarded. So the first meeting is the, the domain panel meeting, which is, we is present here. They are uh, the uh, domain panel chairs and also the rapporteurs. What is the main goal? It is to discuss and rank the proposals in each domain. Um, after this, we have the super panel meeting. In, in this case, we don't have uh, the division um, uh, per domain, so all proposals here are ranked um, and discussed all together. Um, I just forgot to mention that in the domain panel meeting and the super panel meeting, there is a discussion and ranking of uh, the proposals, but also a recommendation about the uh, amounts of uh, um, resources that should be allocated uh, to uh, the proposals. And after we have the resource allocation panel meeting, and here the main goal is, uh, and here in this meeting we have the technicals uh, from the centers also because they will help um, to uh, analyze in a technical point of view uh, the proposals to be allocated in each uh, center. Um, with this meeting, uh, the final decision about the distribution of the resources is made. Um, and this distribution is made considering what? Considering the recommendation uh, done before in the previous meetings, uh, uh, panel, uh, domain panel meeting and super panel meeting, and also considering the amount of resources available uh, for uh, uh, each uh, center. After this, we have the final list with awarded and not awarded um, proposals. Uh, but before communicating to applicants the final results, in this case with the EuroHPC calls, we have to pass uh, through the governing board uh, adoption. So they will uh, accept and adopt the final list um, that uh, the, the peer review uh, presents uh, to them. Um, and yeah, just to let you know that here in the resource allocation panel, panel meeting, the, thing, the information that Clara gives you, um, gives you before about the public administration uh, track and also in the, in the industry is taken, uh, is taken in consideration here in this, uh, in this big, uh, big meeting. For the regular access call, we have uh, three cutoffs per year. So the first one uh, is uh, March, the second one July, and the third one is uh, in November. So here in this table, you can see uh, the beginning of the cutoff, the allocation uh, start uh, date, and when the allocation ends, because in this case, it's a, it's a one year allocation period. And now I will approach the extreme scale uh, access call that is an upcoming uh, call for EuroHPC. And in this case, in a general view, once again, in this extreme scale access call, we have three tracks, scientific track, industry track, and public administration track. And this extreme scale access is intended for applications with high impact and high gain innovative research. There we'll, we will have two cutoffs per year. Uh, and once again, in this case, the period of allocation, which will be uh, for uh, one year. 
The, um, once again, uh, here for the extreme scale access call, we have the two main stages. I mean, uh, evaluation stage and the resource allocation stage also. In this case, for the extreme scale um, access call, the main difference between this one and the regular access call, it will be that we will have a specific uh, moment for external reviewers, three, we are planning three external, external scientific reviewer, reviewers to, uh, 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 to evaluate the proposals. Because all, all other steps will, will, will be the, um, the same. Uh, so we have the, uh, after uh, the, the, the external uh, scientific review, we have the rapporteur's uh, reports, which is two reports per proposal and one consolidated report also. And after that, we, hold, we, hold, we will have all the meetings regarding the access resource committee, uh, as I explained before, for the regular access. So here, we, we will not have the domain panel uh, meeting, uh, which is also uh, another difference with the regular access call for uh, EuroHPC. Um, so we will have a, um, a, a general meeting with all the proposals that will be discussed and, uh, and ranked. Uh, and also the resource allocation meeting, which, uh, which, um, which has as a goal to distribute the, the resource. Once again, considering the amount uh, of available resource in the centers and also the recommendations then uh, in the previous steps uh, of uh, uh, the peer re review process. Once again here, before communi communicating the results to applicants, the governing board uh, of the EROHPC joint undertaking uh, has um, a final word. So it, it, they review and adopt the final uh, ranking uh, list. And the final call that we have for now open uh, for EuroHPC, um, joint undertaken, is benchmark and development calls. So as for praise, these two calls are uh, intended to prepare uh, your proposals to be submitted for e extreme scale call and also for regular access call. They are continuously open calls. Uh, so, um, during all the year, we have uh, monthly cutoffs. Uh, for benchmark call, the, the duration of allocation can be between two and three months. And for development call, it can be up to uh, one year. Once again, these kind of calls are intended to prepare your proposals uh, in terms of scalability tests, for example, or confirmation of codes. Um, so, and this uh, um, is highly recommended to do it before your final proposals uh, for extreme scale or for the regular access call. Um, the peer review process in this kind of calls is quite simple uh, because we only have the technical assessment. One uh, review is submitted per proposal and per partition. So the proposals are accepted or rejected uh, by the technical uh, staff in the centers. And the communication uh, to applicants are done by the HC, HPC centers. But before this communication, we have the, um, the adoption by the executive director of the EuroHPC joint undertaking that should adopt and accept uh, um, the final list sent by uh, the centers. So here in the peer review process, we have been talking about PRACE and EuroHPC uh, peer review process. So we, find, uh, we, we found it um, quite nice to present the main difference between one process and, uh, and another. So the first main difference is, difference is about the eligibility um, of uh, uh, PIs. So for praise calls, uh, all the PIs around the world can apply to resources. And for uh, EuroHPC, 
uh, the PI needs to, to, to be affiliated with an organization of a country that belongs to um, our Horizon 2020. A second main difference is about the access uh, tracks, because in PRAISE we have two main uh, access tracks, which is scientific and industry track, and in the EURHPC we uh, have one more, which is public administration um, track. For the project's uh, duration, uh, there is a slight difference also here, because in PRAISE we have, for, for example, the project access call, uh, where we have this possibility to have multi-year uh, projects. In the case of the uh, EuroHPC, uh, it's only a single uh, year um, allocation. Uh, the next uh, uh, difference is about how PRAISE and EuroHPC understand uh, the um, continuation proposals. So for PRAISE continuation proposals is always a new proposal submitted to the peer review process. Uh, but is a continuation of a previous research um, project. In the case of the EuroHPC uh, joint undertaking, it is uh, an existing already proposal that is requesting more uh, resources. Okay? Um, one another difference is about the scientific uh, panels because in PRAISE, we have only a, a big access uh, committee, and in EuroHPC, as we saw for a regular access call, we have the domain panel, um, uh, domain panel, um, I am so sorry, domain panel uh, meetings and, and uh, committees, uh, panels, sorry. <laughs> um, so it's also a, a, a difference here. Also about the evaluation scores, um, as said before, for EuroHPC we have three different criteria and these three different criteria are evaluated individually and after we have the, the sum uh, of all. Uh, in praise we all deal with a, a score and a, a general um, mark for, for, the, um, for the proposal. Um, and finally, the evaluation criteria in itself. Price reviewers, they are, um, they, they access only the only, I mean, there are a few uh, guidelines here. They access the proposal content, the scientific merit and impact of the proposal, of the project, the PI and the team members, if they are, uh, the, if they have the, the, the competences uh, to, to, to conduct the project, and also the resource management uh, plan. For EuroHPC, we have three big uh, criteria, excellence, innovation and impact, quality and efficiency of the implementation um, of the plan. I know that I'm, <laughs> I'm reaching the end of the time. Uh, and for this, only, um, only a few uh, advice for you if you want to apply in the future. So our first advice uh, to apply is please perform scalability tests uh, through the calls, benchmark and development calls before applying really to production uh, calls. The second one is please consider the proposal templates, the correct ones and updated ones. Everything is updated in our, uh, in our uh, website, so please take a look each time that you are thinking about submitting a, a new uh, proposal to our uh, calls. And don't forget to fill in all the sections and subsections of uh, your proje uh, project uh, scope and plan and include uh, plots, tables, and charts that are requested here, there. Um, please consider also that each center defines uh, a, a minimal uh, amount of resources to receive an application there. Uh, so respect uh, that minimum in your, uh, in your proposals. Um, please take a look and uh, take a read of the documentation uh, for each call, special, 
especially terms of reference and technical guidelines, because there, there is important information there to be, to, to be taken in account. And please contact us, uh, peer review uh, officers, and also the HP centers, uh, if you have some doubts and, and, and uh, any, any, any questions. Two um, last uh, advice is about the feedback that we sent after the, the, at the end of the process. Please consider the uh, qualitative uh, comments uh, that you receive. Even if you uh, are um, accepted and awarded, maybe you next time can do more, more much better uh, indeed. So, uh, yeah. And the final uh, reports, uh, which is very important for us to receive, usually we define uh, six months after uh, the period of allocation to send uh, the final report. And here is the, our peer review platform. So all this process and workflow that we have been talking about, they are managed through our platform where you can find the open, the calls that are open, closed, um, and submit your, your, your proposals. Uh, and for that, you have to create an uh, account. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, we have here our contacts uh, if, you, if you need something from our site. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you very much. No, it's... Uh, Your cheat sheet. Oh. Your cheat sheet. <laughs> um, there was one particular question from online, uh, but I think it's really hard to, to answer actually on the stage. So uh, an anonymous person online asked whether you have statistics according to the countries about how many applications have been received from which countries and how many of them have been awarded. Um, I don't know who this person is because the person didn't leave her or his email address, but perhaps they should contact you separately. Would that be the easiest? Mm -hmm. when they are distributed. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, we do have those st statistics, actually, for praise members, if I'm not mistaken, and, um, but uh, these this are distributed to the country delegates. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, let's uh, thank all three of them again.